big week this week as Mercury will station retrograde. And so I'm, in this video, I'm just going to break it down a little bit, talk about it, engage some of the themes that may be incoming this week with this retrograde station of Mercury and Capricorn here on Thursday. And Merry Christmas to everyone. This is Christmas Day YouTube uh, work for me, and I'm excited about it. Really happy to be here. Makes me very happy to engage with astrology every day and particularly on a holiday. So let's dive right in. I want to start by just sharing my screen here and bringing us right into Mercury. What is Mercury? And anytime we talk about a planet and the aspects a planet is making and the ingresses of a planet into a sign, the first step is always engaging the significations of that planet. What does it mean? What does it symbolically tell us or showing us? And so with Mercury, I like astrology.com. I don't, I don't really know this site very well, but when I uh, type in like, what does Mercury mean? All of the sites that come up on the first page, this is the one that I've enjoyed with some clear uh, information that is pretty, pretty good and pretty nice. I'm not even sure who runs this site or who's behind it, but what does astrology.com say? Mercury, the winged messenger of the gods, it is, it commands us to speak communication, intellect and awareness are all within Mercury's domain, logic and reasoning thinking and how we create and express the thought processes there's also technology i'm not sure if they if they come in here but technology is about how we communicate a lot of our technologies are communications technologies some of the most important ones and so these are the themes when we look at mercury retrograde and what it may be bringing us um communication um so actually retrograde stations in particular are points when a planet is maybe a, a punctuation of, of that planetary energy but of the nature of block and delay and i want to say this here because there's kind of this movement in the astrology community i've seen in the last you know year or so where astrologers come out and say hey mercury retrogrades happen three times a year don't worry don't worry just kind of ignore it and yeah they happen often um i want to say that in spite of that in my experience um not being aware of particularly the station retrograde of mercury it can have really uh de 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 deleterious implications if you're not aware of it i've lived through some real horror stories around the retrograde station in particular and so because of my life experience i've learned to take them seriously each and every round i know they happen three times a year but we have to take them seriously because what if and so this is to come back into the themes of the retrograde a retrograde is a block and delay or a kind of fissure in the nature of that planet in this case communication and reasoning and logic and i'll add technology here um we have to take it seriously and so this what could this be well in my experience it really does um it really is about the nature of technology and communications tech and data and backups all of these things are just really um nuts and bolts ways to get out ahead of a retrograde station of mercury back up your data it's my this is the number one thing i always schedule my data backups right before mercury stations retrograde every time um you know it don't travel i i would recommend don't travel because i that's one of the major things that i've um uh, dealt with during mercury, mercury retrogrades is delays with travel so anyhow th th i just want to say this on the outset that's why i'm doing this video is to help you prepare with just whatever you can do around your house or life nuts and bolts prepping for potential blocks and delays around communications or thought or how we process things let me just move on to the next side this is the magician see in the tarot this is what mercury can also symbolize remember that messenger of the gods that uh, astro astrology.com mentioned we draw down from the heavens and bring into the materiality using the tools of the elements mercury is all about these kind of skills that we have and often how we think and reason are very much the major skill of mercury is the uh, planning and the rationale and the justifications and the language all of those things so if you're feeling some blocks this week uh, around just feeling like maybe you're not able to manifest or some things are going slower um, don't worry it's mercury retrograde station week and this is what i'm saying knowing it this is the power of astrology we know what transits come and so we can already feel into the energy we're out ahead of it 
and we can actually use it positively. This is what I would recommend for folks is using Mercury retrograde to not try to do your, you know, active magical. And I put that in quotes. I don't literally mean ceremonial magic, though that might be something too. But I mean, just the way we engage with reality, we have a will and we, we, we get an idea, our will that might be the solar. Mercury is the bringing that will into the actual form of the skills of reality. So knowing there's a Mercury st a retrograde station week, I just chill. I'm not going to be doing much. I mean, I'm, you know, going to be doing my normal workflow. I'm not launching a big project. And that's the other thing about electional astrology. Most things we do need a strong Mercury, you know, any kind of website business, that's all Mercury. You don't want to be maybe launching major things is another theme here. Um, and so now that said, if you've already got stuff in the works, what can you do? There's no reason to fret or be afraid or anything like that. Just turn it over to the higher, you know, divine, the the great, you know, godly power of our reality. And that's okay. Uh, I, uh, I'll i share a story or I'll just say in times in the past, I've been forced into certain things during a Mercury retrograde and they've turned out okay. They've turned out okay. So don't fear. Don't fear if you've already got stuff in the works. Um, and here's just the timing and the charts of Mercury retrograde. December 29th, you can see here Thursday, is that direct. Um, actually, this is Thursday's a major, major day. And this is one of the great mitigating um, energies of this week with Mercury's rec retrograde station before the exact retrograde. So it stops in the sky, but then it also begins to then move backwards. It's pretty still for a, a little while. Um, it's going to blend with Venus. Venus and Capricorn conjoins Mercury on the day of its retrograde station. What a beautiful mitigating factor here. The planet of good tidings and love and beauty and comfort and the deep comforts of Capricorn, right? The long thinking, deeper, uh, you know, ancient comforts, right? That Venus and Capricorn can bring helps mercury here it touches mercury it blends with mercury as it's about to go backwards and so you may want to rely on this day like don't launch the business don't travel if you can relax and chill back up things in the days before this but just enjoy the nature of this day you know it's the um, cycles of our life right cycles of astrology cycles of reality they happen regularly three times a year and i always like with transits too to give thanks and gratitude for the mystery of life and the mystery of the synchronistic symbolic reality that astrology is a part of and i just you know settle in try to align with the symbols as they're emerging and i think with venus here we can sort of take comfort in the cyclic nature of our reality and the planetary cyclic nature of our reality maybe you spend time with loved ones maybe you're still on holidays celebration here and you've got some people just to kind of rest with and not try to be too active you may not want to you know, trigger um, debates around this time. Instead, be more de deferential and unifying. Um, this might help us lean into that Mercury retrograde energy. Okay, so that's that first um, here. It's 1458 on Thursday where I am. You've got the conjunction, and I'm in Central Europe, of Mercury and Venus. And then you go to later that day so 10 32 um actually so sorry i've got this flipped <laughs> the 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 conjunction of venus and mercury comes after the retrograde station i apologize it's still in uh close orb here um, on the exact moment of that uh, retrograde station um which is 10 32 in the morning so if you're in uh the americas you have that's very early Thursday morning, and it'll be in the evening uh, down under and in Asia. So, you know, midday here, early, early morning to midday in Europe and in, you know, the Middle East and everything like that. But look at that. It's still blending here on that same day. The point is it's happening on the same day. The morning is the exact retrograde station. A few hours later, Venus comes in and conjoins and lifts Mercury up in this kind of moment of trouble for Mercury in this moment of symbolic pause and inversion. All right, let's keep moving. 7 January, this is another date I wanted to make you abreast of for this Mercury retrograde cycle. This is the Kazemi of Mercury. Look at that beautiful Mercury Kazemi, the inferior conjunction. Mercury being purified under the, uh, having been under the beams of the sun, now exactly mixing with the solar fire. And you have this purification process of the, you know, the death of Mercury. All retrogrades, particularly Venus and, and, 
Mercury, they can be considered the underworld, the, the dying of a cycle and then the, re, the rebirth. And this is the point where there's actual seeding. You might think about it as the conception phase of this rebirth. And then the rebirth happens when Mercury comes out from under the beams as an, and is a morning star. That would be later in the year. But you get this wonderful 7 January moment. This is when I like to start thinking about maybe taking action if I have to during a Mercury retrograde cycle. Let's say you've got to pick a time to do something first you know a couple of weeks of the year but or you know before the direct station this is one you can kind of consider and i always like to check in with the moon you can see this is a now newly waning moon this whole capricorn full moon will have sorry a, a cancer full moon sun and capricorn moon and cancer lovely moon in its own domicile averse to malefics and then you get this right post full moon this power of mercury you know you may want to consider this if you're having to do something during this mercury retrograde cycle lovely lovely i'll break down this whole full this full moon in a whole video but so there's this moment where it's the turning point of the cycle and then we begin to kind of anticipate and get closer to the direct station of mercury which comes on the 18th of january so it's a good 11 days um, of the second half of the mercury retrograde cycle as mercury gets closer to this direct station and this is when blocks are removed it's now powerful again and we can start moving forward it's a, these punctuations of the cycle come right on the direct station and then there's kind of a slow integration of that punctuation and a going back over of degrees but this is a this chart is uniquely interesting this time because you have um the direct station of mercury it comes after the direct station of Mars on the 12th, and Mercury is the ruling planet of Mars. And so um, this one is going to be extra potent for full speed ahead and removal of blocks, because you might think about the direct station of, of Mars on the 12th of January as being, okay, this is the now full steam ahead, but not when its ruler is still retrograde, not until Mar Mercury stations retrograde. And we're, I'm really very interested in the second half of January, particularly after the new moon in Aquarius, I think it's the 21st, 22nd of January. It's really the symbolic refreshment of the newness of our whole reality. I'll be breaking all that down later, but you see how this is a, a, a one of the removals of a key block is the Mercury retrograde ending with its direct station. And then it's just a series of like triggers into this newness as we push headlong into the big changes in March. But this is the chart I, I'm very interested in as a kind of beginning of really looking for some things to be to get done in that next waxing cycle of Mercury. That's 18 January. Okay, just to remind us, this was the uh, video, you know, I'm doing these solar uh, themes for each of the solar ingresses. That's kind of how I want to start engaging in the astrology to kind of map it. And I just want to remind us of these themes. I was pointing out Mercury retrograde is a, is a serious review that ensues. And so you might want to take this period from uh, December 29th to 18th of January, just as, as a review period. You know, often we look to this time of year to start a New Year's resolution. You may want to delay those resolutions until late January and use this period as more of a review time. You know, remember Mercury, communication, thought, logic. Just look back over 2022. Look back over the sector of your chart where Mercury is retrograding in. What do you need to take a second or third look at for those house themes? For example, Libra might, risings. Might want to look at your home and is the structure well? Do you need to purge anything in the home life? Maybe with parents, going to talk to your fa family or parents. You can ask them how they're doing. Or, you know what I love with my dad? He's still with me. Um I like just talking to him about his life. I'll call him up and say, hey, dad, tell me he was in Vietnam. What was Vietnam like? And there's, you know, the, these are precious moments with family while they're still living to ask them about everything they went through in their lives and the wisdom that they still carry and can articulate with us while we're here. So I want to use it to communicate about the past when it's in that fourth house as an example for a Libra rising. But the main point here is what is the house topic and how can you engage a serious review in that house topic? And then I just want to remind us, you know, the fourth thing I had on this list was Mars's direct station that this long period of the mutable planning blocks and discord is beginning to end and so it's part of this whole mercury retrograde cycle it's the double end of these two retrogrades that were kind of overlapping and doubling up um so that's the theme here kind of a cohering around the theme and just remember this is mars in the tarot the tower it's the release the break free and i love this card for the mars retrograde cycle because if you think about it this way the tower is a beautiful thing where the lightning of god 
struck the tower actually in the early terror of Marseilles. this is the I think the the God Tower or the Lightning Struck Tower of God or something. There's different names, but it includes God and and Lightning. And so the idea here is that we're free. This is what Mars can do. The beauty of Mars is to break free. And when it's retrograde, we it takes t- we're not breaking free properly. It's blocked breakage. The freedom of Mars is not allowed to happen during a, a retrograde. And so I just want to um, think about how the Tower. When we get to the end of this Mercury retrograde cycle, it's freeing Mars to actually do the job of its breakage, of its fissure from what was encasing us. The tower, a lot of uh, terologists, the card before the tower is the devil. So we're locked into kind of our imprisonment. This is breaking free from a prison and Mars allows us to do that. And so I'm, I'm including this here because it's a part of this Mercury retrograde cycle that Mercury's direct station frees Mars to really break us into some freedom in, in late January and then to this whole cascade of events that take place in uh, February and March. Um, this is that image I had. I had shared this before, but I loved it because um, you could uh, have Mercury pushing Mars ahead is one way to think about the Mercury's direct station pushes Mars and then we're rushing in to the next phase of, um, of Q1. So beautiful, beautiful thing to think about. And uh, just quickly here, two moons as I close this video. The first is that on the 29th of December, actually, when uh, Mercury is stationing direct, that same day we get the first Aries moon with Jupiter back in Aries. I just want you to think about kicking off your Jupiter and Aries moment here with this, with this waxing moon with both benefic still in cardinal signs. How's it going for you, really? Um, I've been re- very much enjoying Jupiter and Aries. I didn't, I haven't, you know, I work all the time and I'm just, you know, sometimes I don't, for my own astrology, I'm not quite as focused on it, but this one's been great for me. I'm just feeling the kind of beauty of this kind of renewed passion and this kind of optimism for the, the for the year ahead that Jupiter and Aries seems to have been bringing me. But look for more of that. 29 December, same day as the Mars, as the Mercury uh, retrograde station, you get the moon with Jupiter right here applying to it for like an hour or two uh, right as it enters. And then the next chart I want to uh, make you aware of is here. This Gemini moon here midweek, it's not this week, it's next week. So the week of like 4 January, 3, 4 or 5 January, you get the final Gemini moon of this Mars retrograde cycle while Mercury and Mars are both retrograde. Now, I think the climax of this Mars retrograde was that week where we had the full moon and Gemini closely conjoined Mars. What a climactic um, um, series of events for a lot of people I've talked to and for the world and all of those blocks and delays and all of the release of information and controversy and Twitter I'm thinking about mainly, but there were other things. But this might feel even more retrograde with Mars, even though we're kind of about to end. Uh, Mars is in the degree of its direct station by this time. But you still have it retrograde and Mercury retrograde. So just be aware of that Gemini moon. Might be one to put on your calendar. If you're going to do some resting and avoidance, this would be one to, to kind of step back because it's activating these two retrograde planet planets the, the moon is. So, okay, I'm going to, I think, end it there. Um, great to be with you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Um, and here we go. Website, sjanderson144.com. Check me out. My vid- recent videos, you can see my reading schedule there. And I wish you a very, very wonderful last week of 2022 and get excited about 2023 i was tweeting earlier uh, it's a major year of change 2023 saturn enters a new sign pluto enters a new sign jupiter gets a new sign all in 2023 so i'm pumped about it and i, I wish you the, all the best in 2023 talk to you very very soon